All right, everyone, welcome to the uh, Northampton Urban Forestry Commission meeting, um, July 5th, 2023. Um, I'm, it's really nice to see you all. Um, it's unfortunately very hot outside and none of us are outside, so that's sort of a good thing. Hmm. Um, just a couple of things, uh, actually public comment uh, before Kent, or Div uh, welcome Kent. Um, Kent is gonna give a presentation. I don't know if Kent has any comments or Devorah have comments from the public at all? No, nothing for me. Devorah, do you have anything you'd like to add? No, no comments. Okay, thank you. Um, I just wanted to make a, uh, before we review the minutes, um, I need to leave the meeting at quarter of six. So if um, you, if the commission uh, would like to continue onward, then you can till six. If the commission would like to break at 545, I won't, uh, I, I would entertain a motion to break at 545. So with that said, um, I did send you the minutes from uh, 6, 7, 23, which is our last meeting. Did you all have a chance to look at them? Okay, Molly just texted me. She said she's trying to join the meeting. I didn't have any trouble this time uh, right from the agenda. Yeah, I figured out what happened. I, I, It was a uh, Scribner's error on the actual agenda itself. Oh. For some reason, the new Zoom link that I had made, which we all had, and um, a few others had, did not, for some reason, transcribe onto the minutes, huh. uh, unfortunately. Hmm. So. I do have one correction on the minutes. There's a, the last bullet right before Arbor Day. I think it says thing instead of think. That's all I got. Okay. In the same bullet point, um, it should be Vicky Van Z, two word, or it's V I C K I, and then Van Z, V A N, space, capital Z E E. And I saw Molly in waiting room and I, I pushed admit, but then I don't. Oh, there's Molly. Yeah. And here's Jackie. Good. Yeah. Welcome. I think what happens, Sue, is because I haven't relinquished my host duties. Um, I think Zoom gets confused when there's two people okay. pushing the same button. So I wondered about that. But that's okay. Thank you for um, thanks for pushing the buttons. Um, I, I just had one comment too. Uh, uh, just a few bullets up from where we just were. Uh, it says we should also look into applying for grant funding opportunities for tree planting. I think we're, that we're talking about the Inflation Reduction Act, right? And the one point five billion through the U.S. Forest Service Urban and Community Forest Program. Is that? I mean, I I I don't necessarily know if we were specifically talking about that particular funding source or just the other, the two hundred thirty million dollars that's been available to the state. So there's there's two funding sources that is a potential funding source for us, but I don't know. Do you want if you want to be that specific, we can. Uh, well, it might just help us focus on whatever funding source we want to apply for. Okay. I mean, there's also like every year we have those uh, potential to do the fall um, DCR grant too. I mean, certain right. things right. that we want to do. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. Could be. I don't know what the answer is, but. David. Okay, Molly. Ah, hold on. Okay, Molly, you're joined twice, so you need to get rid of one Molly because you're going to have a bunch of echoes. I'm not sure. I'm not. Uh,
you you might want to you might want to log out completely and then start over again that's i think jen has had problems with the double um the echo aspect <clears throat> Okay. All right. Okay. So, David, do you have anything that you want to add to the minutes in regards to the U.S. Forest Service funding? Or do you want to just leave it the way it is, generalized? You're, you're muted, David. Yeah, sorry. I think we can leave it the way it is. Okay. All right. Uh, Molly, can you hear us? Yes. Can you hear me? Yep. Perfect. Sorry we're, about that. That was so okay. frustrating. That, that, that's okay. We're just um, talking about the minutes, and I didn't know if you had any. I've uh, read them. I'm good. Okay. Yeah. You're all you're all set. Okay. Does anyone else have any comments, concerns? Okay. Could could I entertain a motion to accept the minutes as amended? I will move. All right, there's a motion. Do we have a second? No second. All right, seconded by David Lukens. Um, any discussion on the motion? There being none. Uh, Bonnie, can we have a roll call, please? Absolutely. Rich? Yes. Susan? Yes. Molly? Yes. Jennifer? Yes. David? Yes. And Richard? Yes. Uh, this is going to get tricky. It's Richard and Richard. They're we're both in the upper left hand corner. This is not good. <laughs> I'm gonna have I'm I, to be Richard. You can. Do I was Richard. gonna. I was gonna yeah. get rid of the sideburns and just have a goatee, but I don't think that's a good idea. I think I should just keep it the way it is. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't know. It's okay. It's all right. And Rich and I have the same amount of hair, sort of. Sorry, Rich, but you know. Um. Okay, uh, chair report, uh, tree warden report. I really do not have anything um, new since our last meeting. Um, other than I, well, just a couple, two things I want to mention is I'm going to be going in the fall, um, and I may mention this, I'm going to be going to the uh, New England ISA conference, which is in Portland, Maine. And then I'm entertaining um, going to the, uh, um world uh world forum on urban forestry which is uh a week later um which is in washington dc so um i keep getting uh, arbor day foundation keeps sending me notifications about the uh, partners in urban forestry which um was a different conference that was separate from the world forum what they did is they they basically merged the two together so it's going to be just a world forum on urban forestry um, there was a world forum held last year, this year, there's no partners. It's all combined. So, um, I think it might be something, um, interesting, a lot of good speakers. The agenda just came out today. So, um, I'm entertaining that. So we, in October, we may have some, we may have to change a meeting or maybe cancel a meeting possibly if I'm not going to be here, although we could be by zoom. So it's possible, but, but I just wanted to keep you posted on that. Um, there's no public shade tree hearing requests that I'm aware of. Um, we are diligently watering trees, although we've got a reprieve on the last week. Um, but we've where water bags are on for this year's plantings plus the plantings um, from 2022. So I'm just kind of monitoring the weather. This next three days is going to be pretty hot. Uh, I I don't know if I'm going to put out water bags on the um, uh, trees from 2021, but we'll just sort of have to take a sampling of them, see how they're doing. So if anyone happens to see anything that's wilting, you could just send me a text message. That would be great. Um, I would, um, I'd like to just yield my time, the rest of the remainder of my time and introduce Chris, uh, Chris Rosa. Chris is, um, um, the tree warden, um, for the city of Malden. Uh, Chris, uh, Chris and I, um, have, uh, become friends, uh, professionally and personally over the last, uh, last year or so. 
Chris uh, has uh, been, Chris, how long, maybe Chris, you could just do a little intro. I hate to put you on the spot and put you on the agenda, but. You're good at that. <laughs> good at that. So okay. if you could tell, tell us a little bit about yourself, a little bit about your uh, urban forestry program, it'd be great. Sure. So I'm the tree warden for the city of Malden uh, just for a year now. Uh, before that, I was the operations manager for the Department of Public Works. And before that, I owned a landscape and construction company for 34 years. Graduated uh, Essex Agricultural and UMass Amherst Stockbridge. Uh, our forestry program is a work in progress. Really don't have much of a forestry department or a forestry board like you have. So that's why I'm sitting in just to try to get some, some ideas so we can get some things off the ground here in Malden. But it, unless you have any questions, I know you always do. <laughs> I don't have any questions for you, but thank you. And uh, I'm really glad you could be here. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, Chris, I can you remind us, do you, do you have a, do you do not have an urban forestry commission or <clears throat> a tree board? We do not. Or a volunteer organization? We <laughs> just started a volunteer organization uh, two weeks ago. So, yeah. It's very, we're a little behind the times here. The, uh, I mean, I, we just discovered, discovered emerald ash borer here. That's how behind the times we are. So just trying to get caught up. Do you have it in your town? I do. Oh. I do. I have uh, almost 300 infected. Oh. Yeah. Yep. Uh, all but 20 will be removed. Whew. Tough process. I have a hundred and hundred and twelve all on the same stretch of road. So that's gonna be fun. Oh. We're gonna mimic Springfield, I think. What a shame. Well, I hope you can ramp up the planting when people can get involved and they'll feel good about doing something. I'm trying. We do about uh two hundred a season on our own. And then we have the uh, TCR here for the greening of the gateways. We just got an implementation grant for 100,000. Just applied to the U.S. forestry for 3.3 million. So we'll see where that takes us. Wow. Yeah, we have a lot of things going on. I've been busy in the in in the last year. Thanks to Rich. Rich keeps me busier. Mm. <laughs> you're you're self motivated, my friend. Um, have you heard from the uh, the feds about that grant? I'm just curious because it. Uh, I have. I was told at the earliest August, but probably more like September or October. What did you apply for? Uh, we haven't applied, um, and I'm actually. I just I'm starting to wonder what our um, if we are going to be able to apply because of the percentage of the EJ district that we have is much smaller than. Um, probably Malden. Yeah. So I think that the majority of the federal grant funding is reserved for um, environmental justice communities. Okay. Um, but again, I, I haven't, and the grant application, the grant rounds won't come around again until next June, I believe, for right. the federal grant. So we have some time to research it. Um, so I think our next grant ask if we were going to th uh, apply for one would be to DCR which would be, you know, have our, our, our letter of um, um, intention to apply by October 1st and then the full grant. But we, as a commission, we haven't, we haven't, I mean, we've talked about different things, but I don't think we've clearly identified exactly what we would be using the grant for at the moment, but. Gotcha. So that's. Well, I of, saw in addition to the social justice is they were looking for towns with very small percentage of canopy much stronger than smaller yeah. as well. Yep. But yes, and this is, this is where our our canopy um, coverage works, I guess, against us. So there's there's um, there's good and bad in that, um, unfortunately. But um, I don't know. We'll just have to we'll have to just delve into it. I actually there's a podcast that I'm going to share with you from the called the Internet of Nature that I listened to the other day in regards to. Uh, um, grant funding. Um, and it was very interesting. It's kind of long, it's about an hour and a half long. So 
but the guy, the guy is the gentleman, Jim, I forgot his last name is from American forest. Um, so it was interesting or American foresters association. It was interesting. He kind of delved into the, um, the grant opportunities and how they would be applicable to different industries within, um, you know, either between urban forestry, forestry, arboriculture. So, um, but a, a great series of podcasts, actually, I think you might like them all because they're all related to nature, trees, et cetera. So mm -hmm. I'll send you the link to that um, in the next day or two. Um, does anyone else have any questions for Chris? All right. Chris, shout out anytime. If you have any questions, don't, don't hesitate to ask. You got it. I'm just going to listen and, and be nosy. That's all. <laughs> well, it's okay. It's all good. Um, all right. Uh, up next, uh, is, uh, Kent Johnson, who's going to, uh, give a presentation on our, uh, the data collected, um, and distilled, um, for our Northampton priority planting areas that we've, I guess, gathered since 2015 to 2022, right? We haven't gone anywhere this year, Molly. We haven't walked anywhere. What? We haven't, we haven't collected any data this year. No. Are you asking me or telling me? I'm a, I'm asking you. We we ha have we collected any data in 2023? No. Okay. All right. So it's 20 2015 to 2022. Um, Kent, thank you. I made you a co-host, so you can, if you want right. to share um, share screen. There you go. Can you see that? Yes. Yes. Okay, so let's see. By introduction, um, this is based on priority planting regions that were identified by the Tree Commission. Um, they, the original, I'll go away. The original report. It's it's um this, these areas in this spreadsheet. This is sort of what I mm -hmm. started from. I got a lot of help from Molly in particular, interpreting some of these things and getting. Um, some backup data as well, but that's the sort of the core definition of the priority planting areas. The um, the trees that I cover here are unfortunately only the successful trees because I don't have location data for the trees that were removed that, that were planted in this area. So this covers the 19,041 trees that, it, that were planted in this period and not removed. So there's a little bit of a mission there. Um, also, I have to caution that the tree locations are geocoded addresses. So when we get to the maps, they tend to be shown as being on top of the houses. And obviously that's not the <laughs> correct location. So <laughs> there, you gotta take all of this with a little bit of salt, but I, I think it's still helpful. Um, so the, the first thing that I looked at was pri priority feed to downtown centers. And I think this is maybe what Rich was referring to that um, I guess several of you walked around um, within mm -hmm. a quarter mile of each downtown area and identified many possible planting locations. Yeah. Uh, and that's the sites column. These, these uh, N1, N2, 3, 4, those are not so interesting. That's the regions that the downtown was divided into. But the, why don't I have totals? What? I'm sorry, this is supposed to have totals for each community. I must have broken something the last time I updated this. Um, oh, the other thing is the, the, the other caveat that the Planted sites don't really necessarily match up with the scouted sites. So this is just the number of planted within these different areas versus the number of sites that were located. And again, I don't have the exact location of the sites. I just have the count within those regions. So, but this does kind of show you how it's going. And no, so, okay, so out of 356 sites identified, you planted. 185 trees within those regions. Um, shoot, I really wish I had these totals, but I think Northampton is pretty much pretty even. It's kind of like 60 and 60 roughly. So 
the number of trees planted and the number of identified sites are close, even if it's not exactly the same sites. Are Where those is, are those sites just the ones in the um the city owned right of ways? I assume they don't include the setback sites. Yes, that's right. Um, although the plant that includes all. Ah. So yeah, maybe I should fix it. I, I think I have that information on the planted sites. That would be a better comparison. There probably aren't that many setback trees planted, though. Yeah, the, the sites is only right-of-way sites. Yeah. Um, there definitely are some, like South Street, along by the condominiums, the D.A. Sullivan, and where the center of the arts used to be. Those are setbacks. Oh, right. Yeah, a few, but... Not probably not very many. All right. So anyway, then of course I have a map because I love maps. So this shows you the the sites for the trees that were actually planted, and the um the different areas that are being counted up. So Leeds has four. Oh, I guess there are none. Okay, now I'm really afraid this might be a little bit broken because I don't know why L five doesn't show up here mm. with um, some sites, because there were mm. definitely some sites there. Mm. So I think I'll need to revisit this a little bit. But anyway, it's showing you, and you can see Florence had quite a bit of planting. Um, Northampton, not so many planting. And again, you can see the four different kind of quadrants that the city centers were divided into just for the purpose of doing the survey. Um, so that's one. Then the next one is main arteries through town. Um, so this is just looking uh, at the list of streets. Here you can see they're a little bit darker here. These are the streets that were uh, listed as main arteries through town. And there are 404 trees that have been planted. I should say also I've got one dot for address. So in the bigger dots are more trees. So here, Cooley Dickinson, there were 23 trees planted. So there's only mm. a single dot because I just have the single address for that planting. Mm. Um, but so some of these do represent multiple plantings up here. There are four trees, um, I guess, in the park someplace. And again, just to make the point, you can see all these dots are on top of the houses. So they're um, geocoded to the street address, not to the the tree address. So there, there's a lot of approximations in here. I think it still gives a good overview. Um, Excuse me, Kent. Could you could you zoom into um, the Fruit Street area, Con Street area? Um, sure. I just wanted to see. Um, if you're talking about setbacks. Um, let's see. If um, yeah, that's interesting. So the, the Fruit Street project. Although that may not have been identified as a location to plant trees, we planted over 20 trees, setback so, trees. So Fruit Street was not identified as a main artery. Okay, understood. This is, okay. This is divided up by the, the various priority areas that were that were. Oh, I think I, the I, previous, I was there a map, earlier map in this presentation? It was actually, um, that, I thought that, I saw the Fruit yeah. Street. Yeah, so there no, you. This is maybe, actually, no? so at the end, there's a map that shows everything. Okay. All right. Let, let's not, I don't want to get too far ahead. There's Thank you. Fruit trees. Street was, is, must be an EOJ. So there's Fruit Street and it's actually just outside of the, um, oh. the quarter mile radius that was, that was um, okay. surveyed. So yeah, there's 16 trees there. So okay. they're not omitted. They're just, I'm just trying to count up, you know, the, the various priority areas that were identified so you can um, just look at each different priority area separately and say, well, how did we do on main arteries through town? Well, we printed 404 trees. How did we do on the city centers? Well, I'll check this, but maybe maybe planted 185 trees in the city centers. Um, so they overlap. And the, the last map actually also shows all the priority areas. As all, so it kind of combines all the overlays together. Um, 
So that's main arteries, proximity to low income neighborhoods. And these are, these are neighborhoods that were identified by the committee. Um, I don't have enough local knowledge to um, comment. I did try to like locate them. So Meadowbrook Apartments, for example, and kind of drew, uh, drew circles around the ones that were fairly large. Some of them are streets like Bridge Road is, um, is you know, some of them are just streets. So those are shown. Fruit Street actually is on this map. So there's Fruit Street and um, McDonald House. So this is just showing um, the individual regions. Um, I should put a total on this one too. Well, this was a lot of work. Yeah, it was kind of fun actually. It was a good challenge. Like, okay, how am I gonna yeah. figure out what trees were on these different streets? <clears throat> it, was a, it was a good challenge. Um, then we have heavily trafficked secondary streets. I didn't list all of these, but you can see again, they're a little bit highlighted in gray, the streets that were listed as secondary streets. And those are actually three separate lists for the three different towns. Um, and identified 493 trees that have been planted on those streets. So pretty good, I'd say, I don't know. Neighborhoods with sparse tree cover. Again, this was a pretty long list of addresses in the, in, uh, uh, I don't know how those things are divided up actually, but along. Um, but basically, I, I made that list of streets, basically the Ryan Road area. Yeah. That whole neighborhood, I just sort of lumped it all together as not having a lot of trees. Yeah, I think there were a few that you thought were okay. I remember looking through these streets. And oh, yeah, that's true. That one out and yeah, that one I think you thought it was pretty that's good. right. That's right. I didn't put all the streets in, but yeah. I looked on an aerial map and was picking yeah. out the streets that looked like they didn't have very many trees on. And I guess we don't have any of those in um, Florence or Leeds. Well, I guess this is Florence, but Florence is more closer to center. And there was a list of businesses that might have possible planting sites. And I should probably total that one too. And I just tried to identify, you know, where those businesses were, and they're all just with little um, little gray dots on here. And then the, finding the trees that actually had been planted at those addresses. So and then there's also the all the trees that were part of the King Street project would hit Acme. And those King Street locations, and then the oh, Catholic yeah. Church planted some trees recently. So they're probably not; those are probably out in our accounts. Is that correct, Rich? Um, the, if they were this year. They're not in this report. This the is King the, Street project. The, the the King Street project was those trees were planted last year. Oh right, uh, okay. So that's before but, this. But I would assume I mean, they, they are they are in that data set. They probably show up actually on the main arteries. Yeah, mm -hmm. so there's a bunch yeah. of King Street, but not all of them were at those specific areas. Right. Addresses. Okay. So, like, in that large parking lot, Kent, if you uh, if you click on that large, uh, the large circle, there's multiple trees. It's I would uh, think that one. Yeah, like three. Yeah. So the, three. those are the trees. So you're talking about. Okay. Thank you. Yep. And the trees for the um, that are at Saint uh, uh, Saint Elizabeth and Seton will not show up on there because they're not no. public right. shade trees or oh. setbacks. Well, there are satellite. Views. Yeah, two separate things. One was the trees for as part of the project, and the other was it's nice that we had identified on King Street those the Catholic Church, and they finally just did it themselves. They weren't responding to uh, my inquiries. Mm. But that's great that they did it themselves. I haven't yeah. haven't yeah. been able to see that. Um, There's service berries, I think, but mm -hmm. versus shade, big shade. Yeah, berries. we wanted the big ones, but oh. yeah. So for summary of the 1941 trees planted that survived, over a thousand were in some at least one of these priority areas. So it seems like you're at least hitting hitting the target to some extent. 
And um, this divides it out by year. And I think it was Rich asked me to divide it out to 2018 and before and then after, because I think that's when you first started actually considering the priority yeah. areas. So the percentage in priority areas has gone up a little bit since then. Wow. Great. Um, and then there's a map uh, that just shows all the trees that have been planted and a little bit different shading. The, the darker ones are the non-priority and the lighter ones are the priority. And you can actually just, you know, oh. look at whichever you want. So these are the ones, these are all the trees you planted that were not considered to be in priority areas. And then those are the ones that were considered to be in priority areas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you can put all, all the all the various overlays are in here too, the main arteries, secondary streets, etc. So you can play around. This is and really wonderful. Nice and dice the map however you like. This is amazing. It could be like so useful, even you know, even communicating with the mayor's office or the or the um or the uh I was going to say school board, but that's not who they are. Um, city see. council. Oh, yeah. You know, to say we did these priorities, we complete, you know, this is this is great. This is really great. Really has a picture of, you know, did we try, did we, did we uh, make gains in accomplishing our goals. I mean, this is fantastic, Kent. Thank you. I think it's also really good as a planning for the next step is to go, okay, what are what are the areas that didn't get covered that still could get to be um, planted more? Yeah. yeah. I, mean, I would add in also that um, you know, a lot of a lot of trees that get planted are because, you know, somebody called up and said, you know, we'd really, we had trees removed from our streets. We'd really like some trees. And that does move, you know, things forward when people request. So we want to also keep in mind, you know, that it's a guy, it's a good guide, but that there's a, some other factors too. And just that, you know, some people really want to help organize tree plantings and get trees. Kent, I have a quick question. Sure. Uh, in regards to um, if you go, could you go back to the the active updated tab of the that spreadsheet? I just want to. Yeah. My question is is um, heavily walked or trafficked. So you combined that that is just heavily traveled combination of pedestrians, bicyclists, and cars, right on, on the map. Yeah, this is not my list. No, I I understand that. I'm just I just uh, yes, my I own... took okay. these three this this category. I mean, these are just in the three different towns, right? So I put those all into the um, heavily trafficked secondary streets. Okay, I didn't have right. any distinction of what kind of traffic it was on those streets. Okay, and I don't know if we use data com to come up with those lists. No, they were just out of our heads. Right. So, I mean, we could even go back and I don't know if there is any data that would be useful for that available, but um, even go back into our heads and see would that does adding elements, Kent, like adding a street on priority or secondary, is that a lot of work or is that? Um, it's probably not too bad. I have list i mean this report is all generated by basically automatically from a bunch of programming code that i wrote and i can add streets to that list and as long as the main thing is they the the spelling needs to match up with how they're spelled in the um in the actually planting planting list mm. oh. and as long as they do then it's pretty simple yeah oh neat and i guess if you Come down to this um, last map. You can actually look because you know the arteries and secondary streets sort of overlap. So you can turn those both on, and um, you know look around and say, well, why isn't North Elm Street on this list? Or 
mm -hmm. or whatever. Maybe something will pop out when you look at this and look at mm -hmm. the things that are right not, that are not highlighted. Rich, what were you getting at when you asked that question? Um, I was just trying to <clears throat> I was just trying to see if if um I, I guess I was just sort of thinking that because we're proposing to have um like for example the main street uh main street redesign there's going to be um three modes of transportation that are accommodated pedestrians bicyclists and cars vehicles i should say um that i was wondering if it would be worthwhile looking through that lens when we go to move forward to try to add additional um planting locations that we think about the pedestrian traffic and bicycle traffic I don't know if it's worthwhile keeping them separate or lumping them all together. Um, for example, like King Street now has three modes of transportation between Church Street and um, Bright Street. So again, another place where, you know, where mass DOT funding has been used uh, to design complete streets, they, you have their three modes of transportation and, um, each level of transportation obviously requires different criteria, um, but the, the the traffic calming aspect of trees also along with the benefits they provide in shade and cooling for people walking, um, bicyclists, the barriers they provide. I'm just wondering if for a planning tool, um, if that would be helpful to have that data separated. And I don't know the answer to that question because I, I don't think we have enough of those areas yet but we could actually look at just those areas and say, okay, how many trees have been planted there, whether they were done by us as a group or by mass DOT through some contract or through the city through a contract. Just because I see that every time we're probably going to end up doing road construction, that all of this, all of these three modes have to be addressed, um, whether it's mass DOT project or whether it's a uh, in-house city project. Um, you know, I'm thinking about like, you know, Warfield Place where the sidewalk had to be completely reconstructed for ADA compliancy. Trees are removed, trees are replaced. Um, and trying to look at that from a just a, a more planning lens. So that's why I was asking the question. Because mm. uh, I think I think tr trees mean different things for different for different modes of transportation. People that are typically in cars, trees are sort of like unfortunately, like those uh potentially can be uh, sightline issues and um, people may think they're a little more hazardous uh, or uh, sorry, more of a risk um, than um, someone who is basically walking and having that tree protect them from the noise barrier, um, you know, that's zooming up and down South Street, for example. That's kind of where I'm going with this. Hmm. And on the other hand, if I'm driving on a hot day, I'm so happy if I stop at a at a light and I get to be in the shaded part. You know, even yeah. driving, you want the shade. Walking on a hot day makes a huge difference. Oh yeah. yeah huge. Yep. yep. Yes. I mean, I think that in modes of transportation, right? You're in your car, you can just turn on the AC. Uh when you're on a bike, uh, although it can be very hot, you have that um, you know, the breeze that you create by moving by your own movement however hot it might be mm. when you're walking, you really don't have anything other than um, the shade that's provided. And obviously the, the transpirational cooling that trees provide, you know, they're natural air conditioners. So um, I, it's just really very interesting how it's broken down. I really appreciate it, Kent. Um, I think it's going to be a very helpful tool for the commission to actually look at this particular um, data set and sort of determine, um, you know, what our planting priorities um, could possibly be for the next several years. Um, and, you know, it's great that we can, this last map is fantastic because we can actually toggle off and on places that we've planted. And we, like this example right here, you can see that we haven't planted as many trees as we probably should in these areas, but thank you. You're welcome. Uh, yeah, this is great. Kent, um, would you share this with us when you're done making those adjustments to your yeah, definitely. total columns? Okay. Yeah, it looks like I've got a few, a few tweaks to do. 
and then I'll send out the link to everybody. Does uh, Jen, you have a question? Yeah, Rich, this is while you were talking about the planning in downtown, I just, I, I just had this thing pop in my head. Um, <laughs> has the new director position for the planning department, the um, so, what sustainability director? I'm, I'm not sure what the climate and sustainability isn't. Has, has that person been onboarded? No, not that I'm aware of. No. Okay. No. Uh, I'm just thinking for the future. Um, you know, after we have time to look at these two documents that um, Kent has generated, and um, you know, kind of get our head around them a little bit better. I my thought was it it would probably be strategically important to maybe invite uh, that person to one of our meetings, and or have a special interaction. I don't know whether it would be you or a group of us to talk to this person because I think, you know, we're all taught, you know, you just started talking about, well, it's different. The needs of trees are different for walkers versus bicycles versus cars, you know, the, um, and just to get in this person's head that, you know, we have this information, we've been doing this work. We are part of the sustainability because the master, the sustainable, right? Master plan never mentioned trees, right? No. So, briefly. so, so I was just thinking that, um, you know, when that person is onboarded, I think it'd be good for us to like zoom in there and say, Hey, you know, we're doing this work. You need to know about us. And, um, we want to be in on the goods that are coming in, you know, and we should be considered on some projects, some future projects, you know, I think it'd be kind of strategic to, because this data is, you know, doesn't, it doesn't lie, we, you know, it's not anecdotal, you know, so. Yep. Thank you. I'm, I'm, in, I'm in agreement. Um, I, I'm curious to see, I think this, I think the new climate, the, the climate director uh, will have their hands full um, because there's a lot of projects and um, building projects that are, um, in the pipeline or partially in the pipeline that they're going to have to pay attention to um, because obviously one of the biggest uh, best bang for your buck in essence to um, and where most of the um, greenhouse gases generated is from buildings uh, buildings and, and and vehicles so uh, but I definitely think it would be good to have this person on board um, and I don't have any uh, present knowledge of when that's going to happen but when I do I will make an introduction and we'll go from there. Jackie, you have your hand up. You're, you're muted, Jackie. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. I am gobsmacked with the quality of this presentation and with how much I have learned and how deep it is. Fabulous job. Um. <clears throat> I uh, and everything everybody said, especially what Jen said about plugging into the new Kappa directory. I was in on some meetings last year with the Northampton and East uh, Adele Franks and Susan Saberger's group that proposed the Kappa and gave their draft of the program to the mayor, and she adopted it. And Adele, who's from that committee, who's a friend of mine, is on the search committee, and I know that forestry will be a priority and that there is a possibility that the new CAPA director will have uh, an advisory board to so that they can deal with this multitude of issues. But, and trees is high on, high on that list. I'm thinking that we might get further with the CAPA director about the issue of their, our changing canopy and the need to plant trees on private property as a public good. That that's a possibility with Kappa. I'm hoping fingers crossed. Fabulous, Kent. Fabulous. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Does uh, anyone else have any questions for Kent or comments? Kent, thank you. When you when you have um, when you feel satisfied with your corrections that you want to make which I think it looks great the way it is, but thank you for wanting to make it even better. Uh, 
Um, could you could you forward um, that link to the whole commission, please? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, actually, uh, one other thing I, I would have to say is that all three of these um, presentations that Kent has done, this data set would really be helpful, I think, if we were ever to decide to go in front of the city council to pro to provide a uh, an update on the state of the city's urban forest. Um, I think this very clear, very concise uh, data set here would be very interesting, and uh, the maps in particular, because I think people, you know, people actually gravitate towards maps. Um, it's kind of hard to read data when you're giving a PowerPoint presentation. Better to have a lot of photographs, but so that's something that we might um, we might reach out to you, Kent, in the future to see if that would be okay um, to use some of this uh, information. Okay. Okay. Uh, Molly, you had a question. I had a couple just thoughts that are sort of follow up to this or that made me this made me think about one is um, whatever was the status. The reason we did those quarter mile radius um, downtown areas was because we were looking at there was that article about um, if you reach a certain threshold of canopy cover, then it makes a big difference in the in the heat island effect. And um, Rich, what was the status of um, the person that you were consulting with, who was gonna, who was analyzing the um, the tree cover? Percent? Oh, uh, D Dave Bloniars, I I need to circle back with him. Um, I actually have not heard from him, nor have I heard from um, Jarlith from um, UVM, who was the other spatial data uh, analyst um, that was possibly gonna help us um, gather uh, some real-time satellite data and some real-time data on our existing canopy. Um, again, which I- That so would be good go for like, in terms of future planning, we still, it would be good to know, um, you know, to have that goal to work towards and to know where we're at with it um, for the, you know, percent canopy cover and the quarter mile radius. I mean, I, I think uh, one thing that I've, th these three different uh, data reports that Kent has put together have kind of made me think about possibly maybe it's time for us to to propose and do a little research on developing, developing an urban forestry master plan mm -hmm. uh, that would be just, a, you know, potentially a standalone document. Um, yes, so Kent. You have, can I respond to Molly? Actually, yeah, oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Um, because I actually have some news about that. When I did the um, the land cover report, that was based on land cover categories. Mm. I remember there were was tree canopy data available, but the most recent was 2016. And they have recently released a whole series of uh, tree coverage data sets with 2021 being the most recent. So, oh. I'll be, I need to dig into that a bit. I haven't really looked at it, but this is on the same um, 30 meter squares. It's a 30 meter raster, but it's showing percent tree canopy in every 30 meter square. So I think oh. that will be wow. probably pretty interesting. And um, also I know when we were looking at the land coverage, we were looking some at places where tree canopy had disappeared. And this will give a, a more recent and more fine-grained look at that also. Huh. It might help answer your question of what is the tree canopy coverage in the in the city centers. Is that is that data that you can easily access and um and analyze instead of having to go through Dave Bloniars and the other person? I think so. It's not gonna be as Detailed as what you would get from a LIDAR survey and that kind of analysis, of, you know, looking at the sort of um, data that came out of the UVM for Cambridge, it actually shows individual trees. And if you look from one year to the next, you can see the trees getting bigger. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's a very detailed look at tree canopy. This is more... Um, uh, it's lower resolution, but if you're just interested in the canopy coverage in a particular area where a 30 meter square is small, 
whether yeah. it's Florence City Center or Northampton City Center, then it should, I think I should be able to, um, for example, look at tree coverage within these city center boundaries mm -hmm. and just kind of add up all the 30 wow. meters. That could be, it sounds like if you, if you don't, now that you're done with this project, I bet you're probably wanting to take on another one, right? Uh, actually, yeah. <laughs> actually, I've been done with this project for quite a while, but it took a while to come to come up here. Well, here's an uh, idea. You know, um, it seems like a quicker and easier way to get the data we need. We don't need that level of detail from the LIDAR. We just want to find out what the percentage cover is of our downtown areas. And see, this seems like a quicker, easier way to do it. And are these reasonable facsimiles for the downtown areas? I know that the Leeds one is a little bit. Well, yeah, the Leeds, just do that. You could do the quarter mile area would be those. Maybe mostly just three. these three and leave yeah. out four and five. Right, I right. I think the Florence and Northampton yeah. is pretty reasonable. Yeah. Um, I think I can probably do that. Uh, that would be awesome. I might even have some good time next week because um, my wife is out of town for a whole week and I'll need somebody to keep me busy. <laughs> perfect. Keep me from thinking about her. Oh, perfect. <laughs> so it might actually be really good timing. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's fantastic. Thank you. Um, I had one other follow-up thought from just what... Um, Kent's presentation about businesses and trees planted at businesses. I was thinking about... The Gazette building, which is not there anymore, which is going to become a hotel. And I just had the idea, I wonder if there's any way we could um, interface with the whoever the developer is who's going to do the landscaping there to like work with them to get some really great tree cover in there and also to make sure that they plant them right and not do the damn volcano mulching. Anyway, it's, it's kind of a weird thing, but maybe there's some way we could um, contact whoever that would be and consult with them about, maybe we could we could say, we're available for information on tree planting species and we have all these resources that maybe you would like to use or something, I don't know. So that, just then, sorry to, I can sort of answer that question. That That is a planning board project that has to have site plan approval. Ah. So significant tree ordinance um, and all planning ordinances sort of kick in so they have to. So I actually am in the process of reviewing that um, plan. There's oh. five plans I that are going to be coming in front of the planning board that need to be reviewed before the 20th of July. Oh, so um, I haven't gotten to that one yet, but I am. I already have a whole page of recommendations for just one. So we'll. Uh, I'm sure I'll have more. Um, great. great. Yeah. So already. my idea is already happening. That's great. It, it it is, but it's also good to have a second set of eyes too. So um, so but anyways, yes, it does. It is happening, which is good. So um, and those trees are protected, right? Because of the it had to be on the deed of the property or something. Yes, yes. Yeah. Those, okay. That's a file. Those trees have been filed at the registry of right. deeds. So they right. can't be. They're treated as public shade trees. Right. Great. Uh, Jackie, I'm sorry, Molly. Did you have any other? Follow up. Uh, my apologies, uh, Jackie. Oh, thank you. I um, I think this commission is on fire. I, maybe is it my misconception? Um, I want to make a pitch to Rich and uh, Kent if on this next project we could include Bay State Village neighborhood, the which as well as the downtown areas. Which village did you say? Bay, Bay State Village. Oh, it's a as a as a typical neighborhood because the neighborhoods matter too. Um, I think that would be. I think that's a. I wonder if that actually would be a separate project where we do all of the different uh, smaller neighborhoods. Oh, possibly. okay. But well, that that'd be I, huge. You do the whole whole town. It would I mean obviously it takes bandwidth because. All of this data was generated by um, over the last several, multiple years by the commission. So I think it would be, I think it would be interesting to see how the other neighborhoods are faring. But I don't sure. know. Sure. I don't know, Kent. How how 
Kent would I'll, I don't want to overwhelm Kent as well, but I Absolutely. would be interesting to so, see. I mean, as far as um, looking at canopy coverage within specific regions, the main issue is just defining what the region is. Um, I, you know, somebody needs to say, okay, this is what we want to call Bay State. Mm -hmm. uh, and these are the neighborhoods we want to consider. Um, I'm sure when I dig into this data, one thing that I will do is just look at canopy coverage over the whole the whole city, or not covered, but canopy change, mm -hmm. and that might be enough to look. You know, if you're interested in the canopy change specifically in Bay State, um, then you could just look at that map and see places where it's changed. Um, but if you want to know statistics on specific regions. You know, if, you, if you did the whole city, then it's all done for everybody in every neighborhood. Thank you. What a, I'll, I'll shut up and get out of your way. <laughs> okay. Well, we'll start with that and then see where it goes. I think that's a point about what, what are the delineations of neighborhoods? Because, I mean, my neighborhood, we have discussions about what it should be called, like the Foxy Hood, Fox, Agnes Fox Park, or, you know, but, you know, we have a sense of it, but it doesn't actually have an official name. Yeah, there there are a lot of, uh, I, I Ken, when you're ready to start working on this, uh, get, shoot me an email, or maybe we can connect by phone, and I can share with you some of the potential maps that I might have that are available that would show some of these neighborhood names, what they used to be and what their actual delineations are. Hmm. So there's a lot of old maps um, that are at DPW um, that are electronic at this point. Okay. So if that might be helpful, just let me know, or I'll, I'll just reach out to you either way. Oh, how interesting. Yeah. So for example, here's, here's a quick historical quiz. Anybody here of uh, the area of the city called Victoria Bismarck? No, no idea. All right, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna give you the answer. So next commission oh. meeting, somebody has to give an answer or find oh. the answer. Let me know. Wow. So Victoria Bismarck. Never heard of it. All right, all right. We'll we'll uh, Kent. I think you're off the hook. Jackie's raising her hand. Jackie, you can't you can't answer the question. Oh, I just said, is it in Florence? I can't. I'm. I'm no. Oh, okay. Here. Never mind. <laughs> no I, I came. I came across it recently, but I forgot where it was. <laughs> really? Uh, all right. Any other questions for Kent? Maybe I'd, I'll just make one comment. I could send out a link to this. Um, I was just looking at the viewer. Um, actually. Let me just put it in the other window and y'all can see, get excited about this. Oh. Um, so this oh. is the oh. um, 2021 tree canopy in Northampton. Oh. And they don't seem to have a changed layer here, but that's something that I can easily compute to like, you know, com do a difference against the 2021 yeah, ah, look at that. Yeah. That is really interesting. Huh. So you can, I don't know, it's not, this is not the greatest interface, but um, if you just go to this multi-resolution land characteristics consortium, mm. um, you can, you can actually look at this yourself. Go to this tools link and go to the viewer. It's pretty easy to use for just Basically, you know, looking at the the, the existing data, mm. MR, MRLC.gov. Cool. So, and uh, Jackie, you can do it too if you if you're interested. Uh, go and. Yeah, I already put it in my browser. Thank you. Oh, there you go. Good. Um, okay. I think I remembered Victoria Bismarck. You, uh oh. You can't, yeah, Wait, but you, you can't give the answer. Oh, yep, I can't play. I can't play this game. Okay, you can play, but, you not can't right play, now. but it's okay. not till the next commission meeting. So oh, okay. There's all a chance to figure it out. Yeah. Okay. You have to come back. Yeah, you have to come back in August. Oh, you bet. Okay. All right. As long as the link works. All right. This, is, this, this is sort of like the price. This is like the price is right here. 
Yeah. Oh, what's the prize though? What's the prize, Rich? I don't know. I, I'll, I'll figure it out between now and then. So um, it's got to be, uh, can't be anything more than $49.99 though, because we can't violate our ethics, uh, um, <laughs> our ethics training. How about we have, to have an ice cream party? <laughs> as long as we I have, have the, little, the kitty cones, they're the cheapest to be perfect. Yeah. I uh, have two baby dogwood trees, a Kusa and a um, Florida. They could be the prices. Ah. Thank you, Sue. All right. Stay tuned. Um, okay. Thank you, Kent, as always. Uh, so Urban Forestry Commission vacancy. I just wanted to update you um, since uh, Rob... Um, sent me his resignation last week. So Rob is officially resigned from the commission. Um, Jordan Freyd, um, who um, is has been to a few of our commission meetings. Jordan's a certified arborist, um, ISA certified arborist. He works for a nonprofit in Hartford, Connecticut, um, um, travels there every day from Northampton to work, um, manages their tree planting initiative. Um, has expressed interest in joining the commission. So um, he uh, sent an email to the mayor's office um, prior to Rob resigning, um, sort of because he's interested in serving, wanted to get ahead of it, and has had an interface with the mayor already um, since Rob's letter of resignation was submitted. So um, Jordan was going to join us today, but um, had a family commitment, couldn't do so. But... Um, it doesn't look like the vacancy will last very long. So I, I'm looking forward to working with him. Um, interesting dynamic, you know, coming from Hartford, which is um, a very large environmental justice area, um, you know, running a planting program there of that magnitude and actually um, having the background in the industry, plus also the exposure um, to um, this initiative, I think will be a great benefit, plus others to this commission. So I'm sort of excited. Um, I'm thrilled someone's coming to us and has been coming to our meetings and getting to know what we do and observing and now wants to get involved. That's great. Yes. So, yeah, definitely, definitely interested. Um, I, I've met with Jordan a couple of different times, um, just most recently at a Mass Tree Wardens dinner in Western Mass. Um, and um, just very enthusiastic about... Um, about you know restoring the city's urban canopy, working with other commissioners, so I'm I'm excited. And that that is uh, that is my update for that particular. Anyone have any questions? No. Okay. Um, so any other business not anticipated by the chair? Does anyone have anything they'd like to Molly? I'll say something. So. I was thinking today about the whole spotted lanternfly thing, mm -hmm. and I haven't really done anything with it. You know, so we have all these ideas. We could go talk to people and knock on doors and this and that. But I have to say, my juice is just kind of depleted for that, um, because partly it just seems like it's not really going to make a difference. Um, like even if we do all this work and knock on doors and do all the education, it just feels like the spotted lanternfly is going to come. And it's going to spread and it's going to do its thing. And it doesn't really feel like whatever we do is going to make that much of a difference. So that's how I'm feeling right now. I don't know if other people feel differently, but I just haven't felt motivated to like have the energy to go out and do all this, you know, organizing and stuff. It just doesn't really, I don't know, thrill me right now. So I'm wondering what everybody's thoughts are about that. Well, it was a wonderful exercise going around, and I thank you for the knowledge you shared and the time of going around streets and looking for Atlantis trees, and just to have a sense of, you know, we have the city of Atlantis trees, I guess there's just a couple, but we now, we do understand how many Atlantis trees we have around, and thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, hopefully that information might be useful somehow. I'm not really sure how. Maybe, and maybe other people have some idea of like a better uh, 
use of the time, you know, what, whether it would be instead of like, uh, should we be finding more Elanthus trees or should we be knocking on doors of, you know, as opposed to knocking on doors of people who live near Elanthus trees or trying to recruit volunteers to, to do all that? What thoughts do people have about that? I mean, I just want to say thank you as well for putting this all together and actually seeing it through. And I actually, I can understand why, you know, I think we all have, we suffer from uh, steam depletion <laughs> at uh, one point or another, because we are obviously very busy uh, as individuals, but also in our personal lives and our professional lives. But I think one thing that it's, that sort of dawned on me is that we have all this data now and we have, um, access to um you know we have act we have had access to mdar which is going to be the entity that will be controlling this if the spotter lanternfly ever takes hold in northampton yeah um, i think the important thing to remember is that the data that we have uh is important for monitoring if we decide to do so but it's also helpful when this does happen that we can give this data to mdar and mdar can actually use it um, to incorporate um, their own survey system that they use. Mm. Plus, it also is helpful for us as commissioners when we get questions from residents that see the spotted lantern fly that may not have an Atlantis tree near them, but it might be attacking some of their fruit crop, that we have the ability to send them to the right place and get the correct resources needed. Um, I think going door to door and, and knocking on uh, and and knocking on people's doors at the moment is probably not the best use of our time. Um, so that, I mean, the only way that I could see it being if we had some kind of flyer or if we used MDARS information and went to the different homes that had a, a, a Lantis, a Lantis trees that were abutting them, we could leave little door hangers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Or we could leave something in the mailbox. So that is, that is, that would be, I think, a good use of our time. Mm -hmm. um, just so people have, because a lot of people just don't have this information available to them. And they're, I don't know how many right. um, emails I've uh, gotten this summer for different um, diseases and pests. You know, I've traveled all over the place looking at different uh, tree, uh, potential tree uh, disease pathogens and pest pathogens and have been back and forth with to UMass with samples and et cetera. So it's been sort of a busy spring for that. Um so when the Atlantis, if it ever does come here, and I hope, hopefully it doesn't, we will, at least we have all this information and we're ahead of the game. So I think it might be good for us to think about how we want to move forward with either sharing this data with people or trying to figure out how to communicate with people that have Atlantis trees near them just to be on the lookout, but not necessarily like walking around and just banging on people's doors. I think it might be good to put this on maybe the next agenda so we could sort of think about it if 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 you wanted yeah. to all right yeah maybe we could on the next meeting we could sort of just strategize what is our okay. strategy going forward okay how does that sound to you jen you have been involved in it yeah i think that's good i think that i yeah i understand what you're saying like oh we could do all these things but you know mdar is ultimately going to be in charge but i think what you especially have done so far like rich was saying is super valuable you know even though maybe we haven't mapped the entire town of every single you know we've you really have a good start and um you know that's critical information because they can boom go right there first thing you know um right. so and i do think it's good to stop and say all right what's the next step, if anything, you know? So. I guess yeah. I, part of the the wind coming out of my sails has to do with the fact that really Elanthus is not just the tree. There's so many other trees that it infects that even if we like removed all of our Elanthus trees, it's still gonna come through here and still gonna have a big effect. So it's sort yeah. of like, I was sort of hoping that, well, if we know where the Atlantis is, we could maybe, you know, use trap trees and we could cut some mm -hmm. other ones down or this or that. Um, but I feel like that's really not even going to make a difference. Mm -hmm. Unless, well, yeah, unless MDAR figures out that it does and then they can, you know, do it, you know, if it ends up here. Yeah. You know? Chris, Chris, you were going to say something? I was just going to ask how many you had in your inventory, if you knew. How many? Um, 
not that many. It's not like it's it's not like the city is just covered with them. Um, unlike some other more urban areas. Um, let's see. I guess I would say, oh, under a hundred that we've surveyed so far. Gotcha. Um, and we've we haven't surveyed the whole city by any stretch, just certain areas. No, just... And a lot of those are in clumps, right, yeah. Molly? Yeah, yeah, and some of them are, are young. Some of them are just little saplings. Yeah. But not very many public ones. No. Mm -mm. So I'll I'll make that as an, uh, an agenda item, and then I'll send an email for our, our next commission meeting um, is the first uh, Wednesday of August. And if you, I'll send an email just to remind you all. To, and if someone can't make it, just let me know. I mean, I'll put that on the agenda and also do a call for other agenda items. Um, while I have a, while we have a couple of minutes, I just wanted to update the commission. So we, <clears throat> the city has um, entered into uh, three separate contracts for tree work that have just uh, been, um, one has been completely signed. The other one is in the process. So we have, an emergency tree removal contract. We have uh, our emergency tree work contract, which addresses uh, any emergencies we may have. We have a removal contract, um, which addresses uh, tree removals that um, you know are either a result of emergency work or trees that die that are larger than the ones that um, we can handle. Um, and then we have a tree trimming contract so that is the new contract that we have. Uh, and so we will be moving forward. So that's a total value of all three of those contracts is $150,000. So we have our basis covered um, for at least the first half of this fiscal year. So, um, so that's a little different than last year. Last year, we had a tree removal contract and we just had an emergency work contract, which we exercised both of them to their fullest value. Um, the emergency contract um, is not totally expended, but it expired. So we have fresh contracts basically from July 1. So that will help alleviate um, some of the backlog of work that we have um, because of the operational constraints we have with personnel, which are have um, haven't really changed. Uh -huh. So, um, and... Um, the other thing that I did want to mention is that um, we are going to have us, I'm going to meet with Alicia um, and um, to discuss the fall planting of uh, 2020, 2023. Um, I, as most, some of you may know, Alicia is going to be moving to New Hampshire. Mm. So um, I'm, we're not sure of um, her ability to participate um in uh, tree northampton activities like she has done in the past and with the absence of rob so um i'll be working with um a couple of members of tree northampton to try to figure out how we can sort of continue to move seamlessly into the fall um so she her job was basic her role it was a volunteer job right it was just to yes. coordinate, coordinate volunteers who's coming uh, to the different Planting. No, no, that's actually Vic. That Vicky does that. Um, oh, Vicky does that. Alicia's job really was, uh, which was sort of uh, took over Rob's um, work. That, in, but also Jen and um, Christina actually. Um, and I don't want to talk for Tree Northampton, but this is what I know is that um, the three of them sort of took over the role that Rob had by basically scouting out locations, talking with homeowners putting stakes in the ground, citing trees, picking oh. the correct species, et cetera, which is what all, Rob did basically on his own. Um, inventory. Inventory. Um, Alicia also, on top of all that, managed the Tree Northampton website. She manages um, the uh, intake list for setback trees, et cetera. So there is a lot of uh, things that Alicia has done. And so the question is, what will Alicia be able to continue to do and then what do we have to try to find um, as roles, you know, try to fill up, fill a vacancy of those roles. So it'll be a, it'll be a conversation that I hope to have at the end of them at the end of this month. Mm. Uh, and hopefully 
uh, maybe someone from True Northampton who sits on this commission can kind of report out mm -hmm. to us mm -hmm. as to where we're going to, how we're going to move. Yes, Molly. Well, maybe it would be helpful. I mean, even though uh, she was just a volunteer, right? I mean, she was volunteering all her time for that. Is that correct? As far as I know, yes. Um, wow, that's amazing. But it sounds like an actual job. And that's why I'm thinking an actual like description of her job, a written job description would be helpful. Like what were, if she could write out, what are your specific responsibilities? Because that'll help us or us, meaning the tree community in Northampton, um, find like people who might be willing to take on all or some of those jobs. But we need to know exactly what I'm looking at Deborah and Jackie lurking in the background, like, hmm, maybe they'd like to do some of these things. But or whoever, you know, just um, reaching out to the community. Maybe there's people who could take on some of those things. Yeah, the tough part was she and Rob worked very closely together. Rob running around town and her maintaining um, these pretty complicated scrub spreadsheets and also um, back and forth communication. It wasn't like one way communication with people. It was back and forth and, and negotiations about what type of tree and then figuring out, you know, it's, you can't really break up what she did into little tasks. That's our mm -hmm. biggest dilemma. Mm -hmm. um, well, she, a, sorry, Sue, go ahead. Right, um, that's it. Um, she was really a coordinator, you know, I mean, you know, the more I worked with her very closely this spring and um, I was like blown away, you know, <laughs> at mm. what she was doing. And I think Rob showed her how to do a lot of stuff, but she, you know, Rob was using a spiral notebook and she developed all these spreadsheets. They're color coded. Like it's the way we cited trees. Like, okay, what do we have? Oh. Where are the addresses? you know, she would do the dig safe. She would give us a list saying we need dig safes for these places. And we'd go out and do the dig safes, take the pictures, send them to her. She'd submit them. You know, it was, it's, wow. um, yeah, it's, it's wow. you know, a big thinking, puzzle. Yeah. 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 Thinking on the, on the micro level of what are we doing this week and was communicating with Rich. And then also, Hey, if you're going to plant something in the fall, we got to get these sites you know, on the sp on the tree list by this date. And so, you know, looking out three months, looking out six months, looking out one year, and then working with Rich on the, um, and communicating with Rich on the tree selection from the nursery and our shipments. And hmm. yeah. Wow. I had yeah, no idea. Like that. Going out and picking out the trees from the yeah. nursery. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, th there's there's a lot of moving parts, obviously, and I think that um, getting all that information like written down, I think is good is is good, Molly. Um, and I'm gonna reach out uh, to Jen and and uh, Sue as well to sort of mm -hmm. dovetail anything that we might be missing, and Rich Parish as well, because Rich mm -hmm. has been. Yeah, she really, she yeah, sounds uh, like like an assistant tree commissioner, really. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, Rich. My wife Wendy is is working on something of a job description uh, based on some earlier material that Alicia supplied. Oh. Okay. We'll oh. communicate that back to you and that might go a long ways towards uh, achieving this, uh, you know, the information that you're talking about here. So mm -hmm. we'll get with cool. you. Thank you. Alicia did a, um, a flow chart. Right. You have yeah. that. And yeah. then yeah. also the other that. documentation that she and Christina worked on setting out documentation. I'll check in with you. Okay. Hmm. I'm, I'm just, when you said Christina, that makes me think, oh, I wonder if Christina Peterson would be somebody who would be up for that kind of work. Just a thought. Rich, <laughs> thank you for that information. And uh, we will circle back with the full commission when we have some more information. Um, all right, folks, I have to leave the meeting. So if you want to continue, you're welcome to, if you would like um, to entertain a motion to I'll make a motion to adjourn that that was easy. Second. All right. All, uh, there's a motion to adjourn. That's been seconded all in favor. Aye. Aye. Hand. 